so I'm going to try this thing that Kim from Middle of the Book March does with a tiny bit of video introduction. And the reason is I forgot to introduce myself in the video. I'm Lindy, and this channel is Lindy's Magpie Reads. Hello, my friends. What I'm going to do today is try this vlogmogram thing that Heather from Soggy Expat Book Nerd and Sean the Book Maniac came up with. It's not exactly a tag, it's more like a project, activity. Anyway, I will link the information below. Basically, it's a tag mention two people and have three questions for each of them. So, my questions have been prompted by this great book that I read. Louise Erdrich's Books and Islands in Ojibwe Country. And Kim, you are the first person, Kim of Middle of the Book March. You are the first person that I'm going to have questions for. And this is the passage that made me think, okay, I got questions for Kim. So Louise Erdrich writes, I carry Middlemarch along with me on book tours because the elaborate twists in George Eliot's sentences provoke in me a mood of concentrated calm. So Kim, I'm wondering, do you uh, return repeatedly to Middlemarch for that sense of, a similar sense of calm? Or is there some other book that you like to pick up and just read a bit of to get that feeling? That's question number one. Question number two is, do you take a book with you whenever you leave the house? I'm, I assume that you do because that's what a normal person does, but maybe you don't. Anyway, if you don't, then your answer is an easy one, or you could tell me why you don't. But if you do, what book is it that you're currently taking with you, and what do you carry it in? Or you know, if it's on a device or, you know, I want to see your bag. <laughs> Show me what you put your book in when you take it with you. Question number three, um, there's another section in Louise Erdrich's book where she talks about how books in her house, they're insulation, soundproofing. Uh, there's books that she uses as furniture and to prop up sagging fixtures. So I'm wondering, do you have or have you ever used books in similar ways? And tell me more. All right, so now I guess I'm supposed to show you a bit of footage. And the footage is actually inspired by Sean the Book Maniac's question. In the comments from my last video, he said that he wanted to see more of the interior art in this book. So I made a quick little video and I just wanted to say that the uh, interior book design is by Michael Ian K, spelled K-A-Y-E, and Tuan Ching, T-U-A-N-C-H-I-N-G. So they designed this book that is published by National Geographic. So a lot of booktubers, when they're showing the photos or other images and um, vlog footage, if they're not speaking, then they'll use canned music instead of ambient sound. And I much prefer ambient sound. But when I was making this video, uh, the first thing was I was having trouble turning the pages because it's got deckle edges and they're 
hard to flick through. But also there were things going on in the house with, between the dog and my sweetie that there were other noises as well. And so I'm just recording over. Now I'm gonna to get to Maya's questions. So this time I am tag tagging Marilyn Maya Mendoza, formerly known as the Baby Boomer Booktuber. And her questions were prompted from the following passage from this same book. Talking about how many books she has in her house. And if you've watched Marilyn's videos, you know that she is constantly getting packages, gifts from people, things that she orders herself, and she'll show us in her videos those books. Sometimes she says they, um, she sort of forgets about them. But anyway, Louise Erdrich. The quantities and types of books are fluid, arriving like hysterical cousins in overnight shipping envelopes, only to languish near the overflowing mail bench. Advance reading copies collect at bedside to be dutifully examined, to ignore them and read Henry James or Barbara Pym instead becomes a guilty pleasure. I can't imagine a home without an overflow of books. The point of books is to have way too many, but to always feel you never have enough. Or the right one at the right moment, but then sometimes to find you'd long to fall asleep reading the Aspern papers and there it is. Okay, Maya, so my questions are, are you familiar with the book Erdrich references at the end, the Aspern papers? Um, actually, that's not my question, really. It's just that it's a book I've never heard of before. If you've got anything to say about it, I'd be happy to hear it. So this is my real question. Have you ever longed for a particular book to fall asleep reading? And if so, which book would that be? Question number two. Do you ever read advanced reading copies, ARCs? Question number three. What do you think about calling certain kinds of reading a guilty pleasure? Have you ever experienced that feeling? And I have a special video for you, Maya, of our little dog, Joni, chasing her tail, and I hope it makes you smile. Now, everybody, you are welcome to do this tag. Don't wait to be tagged. Just follow this format of tagging two people and giving three different questions for each of them. All right? Thanks for watching. Bye.